What's going on everyone? Do I look like I just woke up? That's because I just woke up. It's early Saturday morning and time to build a PC. Actually two PCs, but in this video only one of the two because I still have a few more parts to get for the second one. So the theme here, we're going to build two PCs and they're going to be black and white. One will be in a mostly white theme and one will be a mostly black theme. Uh, and we're going to use Ryzen 3 processors to keep the price low because we've been doing a lot of expensive builds lately. So Ryzen 3 it is. I've also got two pretty cheap graphics cards that you should check out if you want to build a, uh, a budget oriented PC like we're gonna do in this video. Let's see, which of these is the R3 1300X? Okay, it's not that one, which means it has to be this one. Okay, we're also gonna need one of these, and we're gonna need this. Okay, now RAM. RAM, 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 RAM. There we go up top. Okay, so we have some LPX, uh, pretty cheap black RAM here. This is an 8 gig kit. 8 gig's gonna be pretty bare bones, but that's what we're going for here. Bare bones Ryzen rig. And we have some really nice uh, Vengeance RGB white RAM from Corsair. Saving that for the white theme. We're gonna go with the cheap stuff here for the black build. All right, now for our coolers. For the white rig, we're gonna use the Captain 240EX white RGB cooler. Sorry, I wasn't pointing the camera in the right direction. Uh, and for the black theme build, we're gonna use the same cooler, but in the black variant. So this is the Captain 240EX R whoops, RGB Black Edition. Now another compromise in this budget build PC will be a one terabyte hard drive only. This is the only thing we're going to use. Now this is not going to hurt our gaming performance. It's important that you know that this will only slow down gaming load times. Uh, your operating system will take a bit longer to load for things to kind of refresh and whatnot. Uh, so if you're used to SSDs, going back to just a hard drive is pretty painful, but a lot of people are still on a hard drive, so you know they're, they're not bad. It just, like I said, it takes a little longer for things to, to load up sometimes. So these are the parts we're using. We have an MSI motherboard. WD one terabyte hard drive, Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM. We have a GTX, excuse me, that's not GTX, it's an RX 570, a Ryzen 3 1300, and then we have a Deep Cool Captain 240EX RGB cooler, which isn't pretty because it's outside of the box, but it'll look really pretty when we have it all set up. And lastly, uh, we need we need a case. We need a case. Case, 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 case. Oh yeah, we're gonna use a dark base 700 like I promised in that review video. You can check it out right here, by the way, if you haven't already. This is a great case, a great modular case, pretty big for a mid tower, but it should look sweet with all of our black theme components. Now, the one component I forgot to mention, this Cooler Master power supply here, I think this is yeah 650 watts, so V650, we'll be using that. It's more than enough power for this system. This system will practically sip on power. We also have modular cables over there and they're all black colored. They're not like you know, nasty ketchup mustard cable colors. So all of that's gonna fit in here. Now I understand that this case from Be Quiet is not cheap. Sorry about the autofocus. Uh, so that's the one thing that I'm kind of splurging on, but I do want to build in it. I want an excuse to build in it. So if you want to build a, a PC similar to this, I suggest picking a much cheaper case that kind of falls in line with the rest of the components on a price level.
So this is the point in the video where I usually talk about specifications, maybe how powerful the PC is, run some benchmarks. We'll get to that shortly, but I want to preface the ending of this video by saying first and foremost that the Dark Base 700 was not uh, selected because it was a budget case. In fact, that's a $180 case. It's pretty expensive. I don't expect you to put a six or $700 PC into a case that expensive. Your case should be maybe a 10th of your PC's total cost. I wouldn't go any higher than that unless you're like purely an aesthetics person. Instead, I chose that case because I promised in that review video that I would be building in it. So here you go, there's that build video. Also, I've linked a cheaper case apart from the DB700, you can find that link below. Also a cheaper case, the Fantex P300, that's a tempered glass glass case that comes in at 60 bucks with RGB accents. Not too big, but should should suit most cheap builds nicely. It's gonna look more expensive than it actually is. Uh, and 60 bucks is about all I would spend on maybe a sub $600, $700 PC. All of the parts I should mention are linked below if you wanna build a PC similar to this. And I've gotta say, I said this on Twitter earlier, I'm really surprised with the performance of this PC. I thought that the R3 would fall short of, you know, like a typical quad core from Intel. I mean, it's not an Intel CPU, but Ryzen 3 does offer four physical cores. You don't have multi-threading support, but it's still nice to have four solid cores, not multi-threading on a dual core processor, which would not be as good for games. More on hyper-threading in this video right here. But the Ryzen 3 1300X is a really, really nice bang for the buck CP. If I was on a tight budget, maybe six, $700, this is exactly what I'd go for. You could make a case for the R3 1200 just because the 1200 and 1300X are really the same processor. One's just clocked a bit higher, slightly better bin, but you should get similar overclocks with both. So I would say that if the R3 1200 was maybe 10 bucks cheaper than the R3 1300, just get the 1200. I mean, it's it's 10 bucks, save that 10 bucks or buy a nicer CPU cool or something. You'll get decent overclocks with both. The RX 570, by the way, it's a four gig variant. I bought it at Best Buy for Black Friday. It's actually a pretty sweet card for the price. I paid about 220 bucks for it, which is much better than what they were going for on eBay about, I don't know, six months or so, thanks to the mining craze. So I'd say that 220 bucks is fair for now in this current market. Uh, and being that it was a Black Friday sale, I can't really say how long this deal will last, but if you do have a local Best Buy or something along those lines, you can purchase one for a really sweet price over there right now. It only uses one eight pin uh, power cable and it's pretty quiet, save the, uh, the coil wine. Coil wine's pretty bad, have a listen. So yeah, not the quietest in that respect. Though I will say if you have maybe a gaming headset or sound damping foam in your case, then you should be all right. You're not gonna wanna return the car because it's that loud. It's really not. It's just noticeable if you maybe have the left side panel off or if you're just using some surround sound speakers. Now, speaking of performance, the RX 570 will not disappoint, even with its four gigs of VRAM and even when paired with a quad core Ryzen 3 CPU. We were pushing around 60 to 70 FPS in PUBG in the 1080p resolution with the high preset enabled, which I would say it's a pretty liberal preset for a build that's this cheap. It handled it admirably. Things were very smooth. I didn't see any frame dips. Uh, now for comparison's sake, my personal rig, this one behind me, is sporting two 1080s in SLI and also an i7-8700K and twice the system RAM, mind you. And I'm only getting around 130 FPS with this rig. So, you know, PUBG is not a very optimized game at this point. I'm pretty sure it's still in beta, right? I mean, that's why it's always crashing. Uh, but there is something to be said about the value proposition of this, this build here because this build's only gonna cost around six to seven hundred bucks. My build costs just in parts alone without water cooling gear about 22, 2300 bucks. So yeah, you're getting maybe half the performance for considerably less than half the price. But anyway, I hope you enjoy the build. I hope you like the way it looks. I hope you like the way it performs as well. I am really impressed with how great this PC handles some pretty intensive and not well optimized games like PUBG. I also decided to test Universe Sandbox 2 just to see you know, what it would take to make the Ryzen 3 CPU crap itself. Uh, I ran the Earth and Many Moon simulation in 1080p with the Ultra preset enabled to kind of alleviate the CPU stress just a bit because it's very CPU intensive in this particular simulation. And yeah, we experienced a few frame setters, a few skips altogether. My personal rig did not. Obviously, I would expect it not to, especially in this resolution. Uh, but you know, it's not bad. In fact, I would say it's pretty good for a $100 CPU. So again, if you want to build a similar PC, I strongly encourage you to check this video's description to find a bunch of links to Amazon and Newegg for all the parts you've seen in this video. Also some cheaper alternatives, especially for the case and the cooler if you want to swap those for some cheaper uh, alternatives that makes I mean, perfect sense in a budget build anyway. If you like this video, maybe like the build, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. Thumbs down for the opposite or if you hate everything about life, don't be shy. Be 
sure to click that red subscribe button if you haven't already, if you like this video or maybe like other videos on the channel, and stay tuned for other videos on the channel. This is Science Studio. Thanks for building with us.